the wisdom that peruses every activity of God the wisdom that gives God his feedback the wisdom that delights the heart of the father it is this wisdom I'm presenting we understand how the words are chosen why because we are doers of the word we are masters of the word we are poets of the word I pray to God that your ministry will not be in the outer court but you will come into the place of the very presence of God but by reason of Christ who has opened the way we have free access to God and we are not afraid therefore he said come boldly before the throne of grace that you might find grace and help even in a time of need and most of us who think that prayer is a means of just taking something taking something we have never got to the place when we understand that prayer is work when we pray we work when we pray we when we pray we form when we create we make things happen and you know what in the secrecy of this work god rewards you openly. now get set for the good word of god with pastor Obed. of it always a blessing now if you understood that from here he said that there are things unseen and then he said they are real the things unseen he said they are real what is real reality means truth it means that they are actually there. They actually exist. There is an existence beyond the seen realm. And he said, this is fake. Then he goes on to say, unrevealed to the senses. That simply means that, what are the senses? The five senses. There are things that the sense of sight will not be able to perceive. There are things that the sense of taste, the sense of feeling, and all the five other senses will not be able to perceive. But yet, we know they are actually there. And he said, it is because they are all revealed to the senses. He said, these things, they do not come out of blepo. They do not come out of visibility. They do not come out of things known to the mind. That, but that they proceed out of the realm beyond the perception of our present five sensed mind. Hallelujah. If you are able to appreciate where I brought you to, then I'm excited to take you further. That in the book of Romans, I think the chapter number five, he speaks of how that the things that are visible came out of the invisible thing. And he says that it is according to his eternal power and Godhead. It is according to his eternal power and Godhead. And if you want to understand the eternal power and God, Godhead, you should be able to get my message on the mystery of the blood. Hallelujah. Now, I want to read from the verse 19. Romans chapter 1, sorry, from the verse 19. And I think that the other verse will be in the book of Colossians. But now he said, because that which may be known of God, that which may be known of God. Everyone said, that which may be known of God. People, he didn't say that which is known of God. He said that which may be known of God. It is the reason why my presentation today is not to force you, but is to allow you to have an experience with who you call God. Because your definition of God may be far-fetched because you may know of God. You can choose to know him as you should. And you can choose to know him as he is. The Bible says that, watch this, whosoever cometh to God by faith, he must know that God is. God, he is. So there is the isness of God. There is the existence, not just the mere existence, but your ability to understand his structure, his make, his essence, what he is, who he is. 
you should be able to understand what is God. You should be able to distinguish it from who is God. Pathetically, most people in church only know who God is. They don't know what God is. Who is different from what? Who speaks of the personality, the physical characteristics, and the attributes of a person? But what is his essence, his make, his very internalization? What makes him who and what makes him what he is? So now he says, but that which may be known of God is manifest in them. In what? In the creation. It is manifest in the creation. Wow. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God had showed it unto them. It was God who showed it to them. God, he showed it to them. God, he showed it to them. He revealed it to them. The things that have been revealed, they belong to us and our children and our sons. But there are hidden stuff, hidden things in God. That it is the honor of kings to search them out. He said in verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The invisible things of him. So now, God has his visible dimension and has his invisible dimension. God has his invisible dimension and has his visible dimension. And we know that the visibility of God was declared by Jesus in flesh. And it is very important for you to understand that there is nothing like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like that in Scripture. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like that in Scripture. But then I am not denying the fact that there is the Father, and there is the Son of God, and there is the Spirit of God. They are not the same. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is not the same as the Father, the Son of God, and then the Spirit of God. They are not the same. There is one God. There are not three gods. There is one God. There are not three gods. His manifestation is the Son. His effect is the spirit. His existence is the father. His manifestation is the son. That is who he is. It is the reason why the son is the everlasting father. So now he said, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Every man should come to the place of understanding that there are unseen things, there are unseen realms, and these things which we see, the very realm of things we see proceeded out of that realm. But then it does not mean they do not exist. They actually exist. Can I get an amen? amen? Can I go further? Good. We live in a universe that is said to be ever expanding and, an, and ever growing. We live in a universe that pulsates with the evidence of life. We live in a universe, I take it again, that is ever expanding and ever growing. We live in a universe that is not static. We actually, for a witness, live in a universe that is actually always on the move. We live in a universe that is actually always on the move. We, we are on a planet that is rotating. We are on a planet that is going through a revolution 
We are in a galaxy that is oscillating. We are in a realm that is always on the move. Now, the universe as we have it is known. And this must not come with any scriptural proof because it's the truth that has been realized that the universe is always growing and expanding. Now, this ever-expanding universe in which we live in or we are a part of, it is known that matter, which is a part of classical and Newtonian physics, only consists of 10% of the universe. 10% of the universe. It's what is referred to as, now you see, when you say known matter, it is a wrong expression. If you say known matter, because matter is actually what is known. But then, for the sake of trying to get my listeners to understand me, I may make certain statements like that. But technically, it's wrong. Matter is what is known. So now, when I say 10% known matter, you should actually understand that I'm talking about 10% of the universe that is known. Do you understand me? Okay, so now, matter, 10%. If we want to drive this and include all things that exist, your definition of matter will be wrong. Because matter, if it is anything that has space and has weight, that has weight and occupies space, that is far-fetched. That is very wrong. Very, very wrong. Because, what then do you do with thoughts? Pastor Ovid, always a blessing. What is righteousness? What is iniquity and how does God handle it? Does doing good make one righteous? What makes one righteous? What does God have to say on judgment and righteousness? These and many more are the nagging questions on the heart of every man that are answered in this new faith revolutionizing book, Decrypting Righteousness, God's Canon for Man. In this classic expose, the man of God Pastor Obed brings with clarity and deep insights the whole counsel of God on the subject of righteousness as presented by the scriptures. In this book, you will come to a complete understanding of God's canon of righteousness and His plan and purpose for all His creation, both in this age and in the ages to come. Grab your copy now from the CCI bookshops in Accra and Kumase or contact our international headquarters. You can also place an order on www.christcosmopolitan.org. Shalom. Pastor Ovid, always a blessing. What then do you do with thoughts? Now, this leads me straight into medicine to talk about neurons and gliads. Now, what do we mean by neurons and what do we mean by gliads? Neurons are cells and gliads are also cells. And these cells are connected with the brain. Now, what do neurons do? Neurons actually transmit information to nerves, to muscles, and then a third one. What is that? Nerves, muscles? Just a moment.
Neurons actually pass on information to glands, to muscles, and then, what's the third one that I said? The nerves. Now, the transmission of information throughout the body, from the brain, through nerves, to muscles, to glands, in the entire cerebral system or the nervous system is carried out by what is referred to as neuron. These neurons are actually supported, encasing, encapsulated by what is referred to as these neurons are cells that transmit information. Now, the glyads are also cells, but they are cells that carry and hold and support these neurons in the brain. How many of you have ever heard? I'm, I'm doing all of these things. I'll go back to the scriptures. But you need this foundation. Hallelujah. Why don't you speak in tongues for one moment? Even in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want to say something. I'm submitted, even though I'm a, I'm, I'm a little very sure, but I'm submitted. Now, you have heard people say, and it's a fable, that every man who lives on earth uses at most 10% of his brain power. How many of you have heard that before? It's not true. It's a fable. But then I'm about making a statement that tries to consolidate that myth. It is not true that 10% of your brain is what you use in a lifetime. This actually is known that when a person even sleeps, 20% of his brain is at work. Actually, in a lifetime, you use 100% of your brain. In a lifetime, you use all. Now, the moment you begin to use every part of your brain, you will have epilepsy. Epileptic attack instantly. If all the parts of your brain work one time, you would have seizure right, right now. Because the transmission would... <laughs> The wife, the wife, there will be a jamming in your mind. However, at every momentary time, you may be using a certain part. So that is well understood. However, now get what should have been said. When we look at brain cells over here, the neurons make up 10% of the brain cells and the glands make up 90% of the brain cells. The neurons, they make up 10%. I'm going somewhere. Come and say, so why all this information? You'll get it soon. 10% of your brain cells are referred to as the neurons and then 90% of the brain cells are the gliads. And you know what? Till today, the problem is this. There is no definite part known to medicine which controls consciousness. Medicine has not been able to tell us or understand which part of your brain that is an organ that is suited to organize and manage your consciousness. Medicine is dumbfounded in neuroscience. There is no way anybody has presented any kind of submission to that effect. We would understand it, why that thing is happening soon. And all of these things have to do with Melchizedek. Speak in tongues for one moment. Even in the name of Jesus. 
Everyone said amen. Now, so now, this is what is happening. The glands, by a certain inclination, seems they hold and support the neurons. And they form 90% of the cells. But apart from they holding and supporting the neurons, there is no known work that they offer. And yet, the neurons transmit information. However, if, just what this, the glands form 90% of your cells, and the neurons form 10% of your cells, the brain cells, I mean, and this 10% of the brain cell is what is carrying the transmission of information. And this glands carrying the neurons. We do not know what these glands are actually doing, except the fact that we are actually able to tell that they are casings by which these neuron cells go through or are carried. They encapsulate the neurons. Then it must mean that actually 90% of the brain power cell work is unknown to man. I take thank you. 10% of brain cells can be explained, understood. 90% of brain cells is a puzzle to science. In the area of medicine, medical science, it's a whole puzzle. They don't know. They don't understand it. The only thing they can relate to is that these glands are carrying the neurons. That's all. And yet, it is known and accepted that the glands are 90% of the brain cells. And the neurons are just 10%. So now it means that if we are unable to define the use of the glands, we have lost 90% of a certain information we should have concerning the brain. Is everybody with me here? If you got that. And yet, in our universe, 10% of the universe is also known. And 90% is unknown or unseen. If you have realized the principle of activating the DNA and understanding even the crucifixion, we laid foundations that there is the place of the physical crucifixion. And there is the place where our Lord was crucified. And that is not a physical place. My goodness. It is a state. Actually, it's a realm. And where is it? It's in your mind. So, we know that there are the constellations. That make up the 12 constellations of our zodiac. We also know that Jesus, when he came on earth, appointed 12 disciples physically. But we also know that our pineal gland is seated in a place and has 12 cranial nerves in our head. So now, there is what is happening in the stars. There is what is happening on earth. And that is what is happening within us. That principle has to be understood of beginning to understand the three wonders or the triple wonders that move together. The heavens for height, the earth for depths, and the immeasurable dimension within man. Hallelujah. That is the foundation of our studies. There is a heaven for height, the earth for depth. And the heart of kings, which is unsearchable. And who are kings? It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. 
But then it is the honor of kings to search it out. But then the issue about kings is that they have their heart. And this heart is dimensionless. It's unsearchable. Height speaks of the heavens. The dead speaks of the earth. But then the heart of a king. What is within man? of it. Always a blessing. Awesome experience. Awesome experience. Nothing surpasses time in the word of God. I know that the moment shared with you has been expositional, revelational, and your life has been transformed. I'm so glad that you are making time to hear the word of God each time I come your way. God richly bless you. Your life will never be the same again. I'll be glad if you get in contact with me. Write to me. Send me an email. Send me a text message. Call my line. I'd like to personally pray with you. And I know that your life will never be the same again.